This program is brought to you by EcoBank, the Pan African Bank. Welcome to Africa's Next Generation, the groundbreaking series that uncovers the inspiring journeys of Africa's emerging business leaders. My name is Fifi Peters. This is the third episode in the series, and in the first two episodes, my colleague Esther Awoni led the discussions on supporting and empowering women-led SMEs through digital inclusion and digitizing the agricultural value chain for African SMEs. The topic for today is fintechs and their role in the advancement of the banking sector. McKinsey research shows that fintechs make up the fastest growing startup industry in Africa. Their rise is being fueled right now by several trends, including increasing smartphone ownership, declining internet costs, and expanded network coverage as well as a young, fast-growing, and rapidly urbanizing population. So to discuss this further, I am joined by Jiba Diallo. She's the senior fintech advisor at EcoBank. Itumeleng Muyaki, who is co-founder of Growth Factor Technologies, and Kiru Muhoya, founder and CEO of Fingo Africa. Jiba, let us start off with you, and perhaps if you can just start us off with understanding, helping us to understand how the EcoBank FinTech Challenge drives inclusion in this industry and encourages FinTechs to scale on the continent. Thank you very much, Fifi, for having me. It's a pleasure being uh, with you and uh, you as well as Kiwa and to me this morning. Uh, so I believe um, you, you stated, um, uh, let's say, the, the environment where we are in Africa. Uh, FinTechs are really booming. Um, you mentioned the McKinsey uh, report that is actually... Uh, talking about um, fintech eruption uh, rather than uh, um, uh, rather rather than disruption in Africa, I think it's a very strong word. And at EcoBank, uh, we are very early um, uh, engage uh, with uh, fintechs because uh, very early we understood uh, that uh, they are a key driver for uh, financial inclusion uh, within the, the continent. So in 2017, uh, we launched the, the challenge. Um, that was the first edition. And since exception, we have more than 50 fintechs that went through the competition. And uh, we are very delighted to have companies such as Growth Factor, I believe to me is with you today. Um, Growth Factor, uh, which is uh, providing uh, invoice battering solution based in, uh, in Ghana and expecting to grow very rapidly in other countries. Uh, so uh, through the FinTech Challenge, we've been able to identify, partner with them, uh, do some integration with our services. And uh, today we are very delighted uh, to uh, start operating with them uh, in, uh, in Ghana. So the way the, the FinTech Challenge is supporting um, uh, the fintechs across Africa is that, um, first of all, it's an initiative uh, with the objective of identifying and uh, promoting uh, fintechs that are ready to scale uh, through the fintech challenge and its fellowship program. Uh, what we are providing to them is um, a mentorship, is a support, um, is a possibility for them to access a network of potential investors, and of course, uh, the possibility to leverage on our digital services and have access to the 33 countries where we are operating. So it's an initiative that uh, we are very happy to uh, roll out every year, and we expect uh, uh, more companies to come to us. Last year, in 2022, uh, we had our final in uh, Lume, and uh, the winner, which is Touch and Pay, based in Nigeria, um, won $50,000, which is a price that uh, we give to the winners. But uh, above, uh, they are also now in the of the process of having a contract and uh, with, uh, with EcoBank, and it's something that we are very looking forward to. All right. Uh, so let's uh, hear from Dumi then right now, who joins me in the studio. Uh, Dumi, your company, Growth Factor Technologies, essentially uh, the middleman assisting SMEs with the cash flows, the lifeblood of any business, as we are told. Before I get to uh, asking you more about exactly what it is you do, let us actually hear from one of the uh, companies that uh, you 
have assisted and hear from one of the clients who describes the solution that uh, Dumi's company has uh, put on the table called Invoicia, how it has made a difference in his company. My name is Maxwell Kwe Hamon. I'm the managing director of Tilly's Farm. Tilly's Farm is an agribusiness into pork and pork production. We work with a network of smallholder pig farmers who raise the pigs and then we offtake and then add value to it. The value addition, most of our clients are hotels, restaurants, and then those in the hospitality business. Going into that um, market space, we realize most of them want to or buy on credit. Uh, they want to buy 30-day credit, 60-day credit, and some even 90 days. And that puts um, challenges on your cash flow. Um, as a small business, access to finance is very important. Getting your money and payments on time is very critical for, for your operations. So we tend to shy away, but then we've, we're currently working with Invoicia, who find, uh, finance our invoices. A typical example would be would supply one of our hotel clients and then we'll issue an invoice to them. And then invoice here would uh, cost check, validate it with the client, and then they are able to pay a percentage up to 90% of the, in, uh, the value of the invoice. So we as a small business get our money on time to be able to continue our operations. And then invoice here can wait for our clients to pay them. So quite, quite the solution there that you have uh, provided, but perhaps expand on it, exactly how Invoice here, and also WhatsApp Invoice, I understand, one of the products you have in your company, how, how it works. Okay, so basically, um, just like how Maxwell explained it, um, you find that, you know, working capital is actually the livelihood of a business. If you do not have the working capital, you cannot grow in any way. So you find that a lot of businesses, even though they have really good customers, you know, big, uh, uh, big chip, um, big chip customers, they, they aren't able to, to, to sustain their business because they have capital locked up in that particular transaction. So what we do is uh, we just validate that indeed you have the relationship with this big customer that is consistent in payment. And the only problem is that they pay you late. So sometimes um, SMEs have to wait between 30 to 120 days mm -hmm. before an invoice is issued. I mean, before an invoice is paid after it has been issued. So what we're saying is give that invoice to us. We just validate that you did this transaction and, and it has been passed through and you're only waiting for payment. Payment. We will pay you while you're waiting for your while, while you're waiting for your customer, and they can then just pay us instead, right? And this comes at a discounted value that is affordable for the customer as well for okay. the SME. Yeah, uh, clearly a very <laughs> a beneficial uh, solution for for SMEs. I mean, working problem often s uh, working a uh, capital often cited as a big challenge there. But uh, our next case uh, study is that of Fingo, and it is a digital bank that's built for young Africans by young Africans with a founding team of 20-somethings that were born and raised on the continent. Their mission is to empower our youth to create a wealthier Africa with distinctly designed financial uh, products. So Kiru Mohoya is uh, the founder and CEO of Fingo Africa and we're hearing from him right now. Uh, Kiru, why do you think that digital banking is best targeted towards young people? Thank you for having me, Fifi. Um, so when we look at Africa's population, 70% um, is young people. Uh, and by 2030, almost half of the entire world population of young people, um, that's by UN definition under 35, are going to be in Africa. So the bigger question is, why not serve them? And ironically, the reason we don't see a lot of financial products or services designed for this demographic is because of the perceived low value and the perceived um, uh, the idea that young people actually are not um, uh, are not going to develop into high income, high earning people in the future, which is something that Finger is banking on. So our idea is that uh, our premise is that in the future, these young people are going to make up most of the consumers. They're going to run most of the businesses and they're going to consume most of the financial products and services. So we believe uh, Fingo as 
as our mission is to empower young people, give them the opportunity to create wealth. And the foundation of that is giving them access to financial services. And the idea of a digital bank is quite simple. Um, young people are digitally native. Uh, smartphone penetration is increasing across the continent. Uh, the cost of data is falling, as you noted. And so the idea is that you give young people um, an app called Fingo, um, powered by EcoBank, and this app enables them to create an account in under five minutes. You, know, you cut away the time to branches, um, and they're able to transact, access all sorts of financial services, um, as well as savings, credit, um, and, and, and so on. Okay. Uh, Jiba, to come back to you and perhaps a quick comment on uh, your partnership with not only uh, Kiru's company, but also that of uh, uh, Dumis historically. What was it about these uh, two companies that made them an ideal partner for a large institution such as EcoBank? So I believe um, we already mentioned that um, uh, we, we've been able to identify a growth factor through the fintech challenge. Um, so we have uh, several criteria that we are using to select companies that we want to have with us uh, uh, at the final stage of the competition. And uh, the, the first, um, so we have some um, um, criteria that are defined by uh, our uh, internal departments based on the on the on the needs actually or the um, uh, uh, the issues that some of our colleagues are, our, our customers are facing and um, those criteria are, commun are communicated to uh, the participant to the fintech challenge so one of the needs that we had uh, was better serve SMEs and uh, growth factor was uh, uh, definitely fitting within uh, that uh, that scope and that's, I guess, the reason why they've been able to, to make it to that to this stage. The other point is that, um, it, which is a very important one, is that they've been able to comply uh, with our uh, regulation requirement. Uh, the banking sector is highly reg uh, regulated, and it's very important for us as a bank uh, to, uh, uh, to to make sure that uh, we uh, uh, we comply with uh, all, all everything that the central banks are, are requiring for us. And uh, Growth Factor have been able to meet um, uh, all the, the, the requests that uh, we were having, as well as the central bank in Ghana. And that's a very important point. Uh, same for um, uh, for Fingo in Kenya. Uh, the, the first uh, reason why we were very interested uh, on working uh, with them was because um, they were bringing a very uh, uh, innovative solution um, that we believe uh, will bring essential tools, essential financial tools to youth, uh, which is a very important mission that EcoBank has um, uh, by uh, uh, making sure that uh, we are onboarding as many uh, youth uh, as possible on the on the banking sector. Um, uh, you mentioned that uh, the uh, the financial inclusion is in Africa is quite low. Actually, according to the World Bank, uh, we still remain at uh, below 25 percent in, in sub-Saharan Africa, in countries such as uh, the Democratic uh, Republic of Congo, um, more than. Uh, close to 95% of the adult population still don't have a bank account. So partnering with Fingo for us completely makes sense because they were bringing um, the, a very innovative solution that was very attractive to your people. And on the back end, uh, we were providing the infrastructure, secure and robust infrastructure for them to be able to operate seamlessly. Uh, this was completely in line with our strategy of becoming a bank as a platform, uh, because out of the, the fintech challenge, we also um, launched our EcoBank Sandbox in 2020, 2020 actually, where we publish um, our APIs, uh, which means uh, application programming interface, uh, to enable third, party, third parties such as fintechs and telcos to easily connect with our digital services and um, provide innovation to their own customers. So uh, when Fingo reached out to us at that time, we just published our Express Account API, which is a service uh, that we deliver to our customers to be able to open account digitally without uh, necessarily having to uh, going to a branch. And um, the, the plan that uh, Fingo had was completely in line with our own strategy. And it looked uh, very obvious to us uh, that uh, it's going to be a, a very strong and uh, and uh, a fruitful partnership uh, to work with them. All right.
Uh, Jiba, we're going to hit a uh, break, go ahead to a short break right now. Uh, we will be back uh, after this for uh, more on the discussion of uh, fintechs and their role in the advancement of the banking sector here in Africa. Stay with us. Welcome back to our discussion on fintechs and their role in the advancement of the banking sector. I still have with me my guest, Ajiba Diallo, the senior fintech advisor at EcoBank, as well as Itumeleng Muyachi, co-founder of Growth Factor Technologies, and Kiru Muyoha, the uh, founder and CEO of Fingo Africa. Kiru, perhaps to uh, begin with you this time around, because we uh, can see some of the uh, advantages to large institutions like EcoBank for partnering with uh, with fintechs, it to help them. It helps them perhaps increase their uh, competitive and their business edge. But uh, having been a beneficiary of such a partnership, what would you tell other startups and other fintechs out there about the benefits to the fintech in partnering with larger institutions? Thank you, Fifi. Um, first, a big commendation to EcoBank for realizing and seeing the value of adopting technology that helps support young people. Um, and in regard to your to your question, um, so banks and fintechs fundamentally do different things. Banks are extremely good at building trust and regulation and compliance, and are, and therefore able to build strong relationships um, with with clients. Um, however, startups are very nimble and agile and can oftentimes only do one important thing, which is build uh, good you know, software. Um, and so because startups are often young and oftentimes don't have a lot of resource, um, it means that it's difficult for them to build trust with consumers. And so where EcoBank comes in, um, EcoBank is able to bring uh, trust by a regulation. So partnering with EcoBank gives us the ability to very securely integrate to the platform that has been tested and robust and works extremely well across Pan-African, uh, across multiple countries across Africa. So it is Pan-African and it's regulated by multiple, uh, in multiple jurisdictions. And, and what that enables us to do as a startup is focus on a very specific thing, which is serving young people, giving them a dynamic experience, uh, making sure that the customer centricity of the application and the um, kind of vibe of it as well appeals to young people. Um, and so to, to startups, um, to, to banks, I think understanding the two different roles that they play, uh, understanding that actually the, even the makeup of these two different institutions uh, imply that they, they serve different roles. You know, bankers are experienced, fintechs actually have uh, less experience, but are, are more agile, and therefore the two work extremely well together, especially targeted at a niche uh, market such as, such as young people. All right. Uh, Dumi, you work with both essentially in your uh, business by uh, assisting companies, SMEs with the cash flow. And uh, what has been your experience with working with financial institutions? If you can just describe that relationship so far. So as our invoice is a financial product, you get to understand that as a startup, you might not have the complete liquidity. Um, remember that we're financing businesses and as we're giving them more um, more room for them to grow their business, it means they're going to come back for more. And that liquidity, that is something that's covered by the financial institutions. You know, that is the gap that's covered by them. And also, like, um, you know, uh, they, uh, uh, Figo rightfully put it, you, the collaboration is needed because the banks are the legacy. They have, you know, the, 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 um, the regulation and stuff actually de-risks entire process for us. Um, so we, we were able to, 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 to de-risk our processes mm -hmm. and um, we also understand that um, w fulfilling completely the, the need of the SME, we cannot do it on our own. Like I said, the liquidity lies with the bank. So as, as they become bigger and the demand is getting larger mm -hmm. and the risk is getting bigger, that is when you know, they can be handled by a financial institution. Uh, yeah. Talking about <laughs> risk, and Jiba, perhaps you can uh, help us uh, with this answer. The risk and the growing risk of cybersecurity as we have this proliferation of digital uh, banking and digitized solutions. As EcoBank, how are you thinking about uh, this space and ensuring that uh, as you do onboard a whole lot more uh, fintechs, that uh, it's done so uh, securely, not only for uh, yourselves as the bank, but also ultimately for the customers? So I think it's a point that we are making very clear every time we start a partnership with, uh, with fintechs. Uh, we don't play with, uh, with compliance, we don't play with regulation, we don't play with risk. 
um, you know, over the decade, uh, we've been able to uh, build a, a very solid, secured, uh, and, and robust infrastructure. Um, we always uh, make sure that we are in line with uh, what the regulator are asking to us. And we have uh, processes uh, that uh, we are implemented to make sure that every time we release a new product within the market, um, we are uh, making sure that uh, in terms of risk, um, uh, we are as low as possible. Of course, risk zero doesn't exist, but uh, uh, with the internal processes that we have, we make sure that uh, we are securing our customer data and privacy. It's key for us. And uh, it's a point that we are making very clear with all the companies that we are partnering with them. It actually happens sometimes uh, that uh, um, a fintech comes to us and is not ready to that uh, standpoint. And we decide to give them more time uh, to work internally uh, make sure that, uh, they have all, all the, uh, the the required uh, processes internally and uh, that uh, they are in line with uh, uh, what the regulators are asking to uh, to us as a bank uh, to make sure that we continue our operations safely and securely. Um, we've been able to, um, uh, over the, the decades uh, um, that uh, of existence, we've been able to collect a lot of data from our customers uh, and it's a very, very uh, big, uh, huge opportunity um, with the, the advent of uh, uh, new technologies such as artificial intelligence. Uh, uh, so coupling the data with artificial intelligence is a very good opportunity for us to, uh, to even um, to delight our customer more. But uh, prior to that, we need to make sure that uh, uh, our uh, customers' data and privacy is uh, definitely secured, and we have all the processes internally uh, that uh, we um, uh, we implement, and we also ask to our partners to make sure that they, they are in line with those processes and requirements. Okay, uh, so quite a lot of uh, governance checks at uh, EcoBank, which is a great thing. But uh, perhaps, Kiri, you can speak uh, from a broader perspective because uh, sometimes a lot of uh, people view fintechs and the space thereof as uh, slightly less regulated than the traditional banking system, which opens up uh, customers to all sorts of threats in terms of their uh, information being kept safe and secure. Uh, speaking from a perspective of a fintech, how are you thinking about going perhaps even above and beyond the governance uh, structures at EcoBank, to ensure that uh, your uh, customer transactions, the uh, customers of your uh, young and vibrant youth population, remain secure while they engage in your, on your platform? Yeah, uh, uh, excellent question. And um, I believe uh, fundamentally, uh, if you're playing the financial services space, then you you must be regulated. Um, the the bar for regulation is extremely high. Um, you know, data security, governance, and every other risk factor considered. And and working with a with a partner like EcoBank often means that um, you do not go live and you do not proceed unless all these standards are met. And part of the benefits of the partnership means that actually you get to lean on the expertise that EcoBank has developed. So in terms of developing um, uh, robust and sufficiently regulated transaction systems, um, we actually rely on EcoBank, um, who's developed um, some of the most sophisticated systems you know, of this kind in, in Africa, meaning that actually Fingo doesn't have to develop the systems. Um, uh, the cost of developing the systems for majority startups is extremely high, and I mentioned the high bar of regulation. Um, so that's some of the benefits of this partnership. And aside from that, uh, before launching a new product, there's also a process with uh, local central banks. Um, so after um, a fintech kind of poses a new product, products such as Fingo and you know EcoBank come together and uh, or the different bank come together and they want to launch this product, there's also a process with the, with the regulator. The regulator comes, has a look at the systems already set uh, in place, and then. Um, you know, is able to query the systems, is able to stress test the system. And with this, um, with this you know, kind of process, the consumer is protected. And I think the consumer as well, um, you know, should not absolutely trust or be in a position to transact on a, on a product that isn't regulated. And that's why um, you find uh, very few uh, fintechs are able to get that stamp of approval, simply because the buy is extremely high. Um, and I would say that you know, partnerships like you know, the one we have with EcoBank help uh, fintechs achieve this bar, um, as well as uh, going through uh, the regulatory process with uh, the local central bank. Okay.
So uh, they're speaking to the uh, benefits of both parties being at the table. As you say, the uh, security infrastructure can be quite expensive for, for uh, fintechs, and this is where partners like EcoBank uh, help. Anything uh, that you'd add from a, a security uh, perspective as it does pertain to your company? Um, yes, um, the verification and authentication processes in which we, we have undertook since being with EcoBank have also been quite strict. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and if, we, if you're working with the financial institution, you're in a regulated space, you know, um, even providing finance on its own. So that means you really have to increase the quality. You may have to make sure that things like, you know, end-to-end um, -end encryption are in place, that there are no data leaks. So that is something that the bank takes quite seriously, that, that nobody will be able to access their data. And customers also take that seriously, especially now with, you know, the Papaya Act out and cybersecurity being such a big deal, you know. So um, that those those are things that the, the, the bank, uh, Echo Bank, has actually been able to help us um, uh, beef up, I would okay. say. Yeah. Okay. Uh, inclusion. Uh, also, it would seem that uh, EcoBank is taking inclusion quite uh, seriously. I mean, you are one of the a few women in fintech in Africa's space. And I'd like your uh, brief take on why you uh, think it is more important right now to make sure that a lot more women are at the fintech table. Um, I feel like, you know, our women have this um, way of growing things. We, because we've been historically marginalized as well, you know, when it comes to finance, we understand the problem. We understand exactly what, what the SMEs are going through as we've also felt the struggle. So it's, it, 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 we, we, we come with that empathy when it comes to really um, redesigning products, uh, uh, improving our processes, and really to accommodate the marginalized. Okay. Yeah. And of course, uh, it is about competence, because yes. it's not just about uh, taking the gender tick, oh but no, your definitely. business oh needs no, to definitely. speak for itself <laughs> and your skills and your competence. Yeah. But uh, that is uh, where we leave things then on this uh, particular discussion. It does wrap up a fascinating uh, discussion. And I would like to thank my guests and uh, the audience for staying tuned throughout this uh, broadcast. Do join us for the next episode in the series, and that uh, will be happening in June. Until then, it's goodbye. <laughs>